Welcome into the City of Soccer podcast special edition. We are sitting down with new general manager of Houston Dynamo FC, Pat Onsad. Pat, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Garrett. I'm, yeah. I'm excited. Pleasure, pleasure to have you in. Welcome back to Houston. Um, here for a long time, obviously, playing, and, and you're coming back. And just tell us a little bit about that decision for you and, and what you're feeling right now. Yeah, it was a pretty easy decision. I think uh, my family, when we lived here for five years, we enjoyed it. We uh, fell in love with the city. Uh, we lived south of the city at Oden Pearland and stuff, but we, uh, uh, we really enjoyed it here. My, my youngest daughter was born here in Houston, so we have a lot of attachment to the city. So uh, when the opportunity came up that there was a vacancy, um, I, I, you know, applied and, and was fortunate enough to get offered the job, and I'm really excited about the opportunity. We'll talk, we'll talk more about the opportunity and getting the job. I, I kind of want to go back and talk about your, when you ended your career, you decided to shift to the front office. There's always that moment for a player of what they want to do. Was that something that was always in your head? Where did that come in for you? No, no, it wasn't. I, I think my first and foremost, like a lot of players ex, and ex-players, they want to get into coaching. Uh, I was fortunate to... Uh, you know, I, I work with some really good coaches when I when I played. Frank Yallop, Dominic Kinnear, you know, guys in MLS had a big influence on my, on my career. And then uh, when I went into the coaching world, I got to work with Ben Olsen, who was a fantastic individual, great human being. Uh, from there, spent a little bit of a year, got a taste in Toronto with uh, uh, scouting and just getting an idea of what it's like in the front office. Uh, but was able to work with Greg Berhalter for five years in, in Columbus. and. Uh, an op unbelievable opportunity for me and something that really opened my mind in terms of the way the game's played and from a tactical viewpoint. So it was a really good experience for me. Uh, and then I really just kind of walked into the position of front office. So when the transition between ownership group, between Anthony Precourt and then to the Haslam and, and Edwards families took it over and the Johnson family took over the, the club in Columbus, they needed an interim GM before Tim Bezbachenko was hired. So. I was throwing in it for about six weeks or so, but you're in the deep end and you're doing everything. You're kind of holding the club together. Uh, and it was something I absolutely fell in love with right away. And then I knew that like, that's the path I wanted to go down. Yeah. So not, not your, this was not your path. Like when you started, you weren't like, I want to be a GM. You were kind of leaning towards coaching and it all just kind of fell that way. Absolutely. I think when you're a player, as long as I was 25 years, yeah. you're, you, you know, the locker room, you know, the field, the practice field, you know, the stadiums and that's your life. Your life is a coach. Um, but then when you start kind of getting different experiences and you get into the front office and you see that uh, while you have a big influence on the group, it's from a different perspective. Uh, and I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed kind of, I'm a, I'm a collaborator. I like trying to get people on board and trying to get people moving in the same direction. Uh, and uh, I enjoyed that opportunity to be able to do that from a different level. So what, when this job came open, what made you want this job so badly? Well, f first and foremost, it's Houston. So uh, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, it's a city that we love. Uh, and we wanted to come back here uh, as soon as we could. Uh, and it took, took 10 years or so, a little over 10 years, but we got the opportunity to come back. So I was excited about that. Uh, and I got an opportunity to meet uh, Ted Siegel, uh, fantastic owner. I'm really excited to work with him and work for him. I think uh, he's, he's got a vision for the club and where he wants the club to go. And I, I feel we, we align very well culturally, which I think is really important to me and seems very important to Ted as well. So um, I'm excited about the opportunity. Nice. What, anything else from Ted, from your conversations with him that he's new, obviously to the club, owning the club and new to the city, just anything you clean? Yeah, I think, I think for him, the, the biggest thing is, I think he looks from, uh, from above and takes a look at the whole club in general. Um, you know, part, part of his investment in the club. I mean, that, that, I'm, I'm not going to come here and, and pretend that that's not a big issue, uh, but he's definitely committed to that. He wants to make a, a commitment to the club financially. Uh, and, and I believe in terms of certainly with my experience in Columbus and what we built there, uh, I believe that what we can do the same here. And I think we can build a contender for championships. And that's our goal. You mentioned um, your time with Greg Ber Berhalter and, and the kind of the style and the, and the way that that team played in Columbus is very, very specific. And then a little bit different right now here in Houston. Are you looking to mix that up or you want to? Yeah, I don't. I, listen, I, I, I obviously understand the way that, that Greg played. Well, I mean, I lived it for five years, and I was a big part of that, that uh, staff and uh, very fortunate to be a part of that staff. I think when you look down the road, you go to Austin, and you see Josh Wolf is trying to do the same thing in Austin. Um, at times, I think that system, um, even if you watch Greg now with the national team, he's, he's adapted that system. And, and I believe that the game is always changing. So uh, for me, I think when you have a system for the club and an identity for the club, 
is it has to match what is the vision for the club? What does the owner want? What does the club see? What do we want to be? Do we, you know, we're in the energy capital of the country, right? So I think we need to be a high energy team. We need to be a team that, um, you know, presses and is aggressive in, in the way we play. Um, we may not be as controlled as, as the way certainly the old Columbus teams played with Greg Berhalter where we're a little bit, but I, I envision a team that, that is uh, that, that sort of team where it's aggressive and is a proactive team. And um, certainly when I spoke with Ted, that's what he believes in as well. So I'm pretty excited about that. With, with kind of your staff and you, you've done everything you mentioned in your, you know, you've scouted a little bit, you've done some coaching, you, you're now front office. Are you a hands-on type GM? Are you planning on being that? Are you going to be out there scouting players? Are you going to hire people, send them out and trust them? What, what are you thinking? I think everything you're talking about is hands-on. So yeah. yes, I will be hands-on. Um, but I, I think, um, as I mentioned before, I'm a relationship builder. I'm a collaborator. Uh, I think it's important for that, that I know everybody in the club, that everybody can feel comfortable coming to me and, if they have concerns or if they have successes, we celebrate them together. You know, if we have disappointments, we, we're disappointed together. And I think that's uh, the only way moving forward. And it's certainly the way I want to operate. Um, it's, there's one thing when I you know when I sat down with uh, Ted and, and spoke to, to the group about what I see for the vision, I, I, want, it, I want it to be a, a full group that we're moving in the same direction together. We can't be a, a group that's individual and going, going sideways. And I'm saying that's where we're at now. But... I want our group to be together and unified and, and if all gaming for the same goal, which is try to win a championship for us. Now, when you were here, the academy was kind of in its infancy. It was just starting, just building. It's obviously gotten a lot bigger, starting to see homegrown players make debuts for the first team club. What do you see in the academy? What do you, what do you want from that as far as how it develops this club? Uh, what do we want? We'd love them to produce players that we can sell for $10 million and they can come <laughs> in and start for the club. Um, but I think what we're starting to see, and, and uh, we talked about it earlier, but Juan Castillo is a great example. He's actually a, a player that was in, I saw in Columbus, was at Columbus Academy for, for a short time, but got to see him and then he made his debut the other night against uh, Colorado. So uh, those are the opportunities and I think help that help grow the academy. When those players that are you know, 13, 14 years old can look and see a Juan Castillo at the age of 17 breaking in for the first team, those are opportunities, I think, that will help attract players that want to come on and play on the first team. Now, uh, I know James kind of James Clarkson started it from yep. kind of its infancy and has now moved on to the dash. But uh, you know, Paul Holliker has done a good job here, especially in the grassroots, to try to try to get everyone on board and try to push forward for the Houston Dynamo. I think ultimately, for me, the most important thing is that we can get the best players in this region playing for our for our club. Let's go back a little bit to just your playing time here, and um, obviously something the fans want to want to maybe know about a little bit. Aside from the championships, is there is there a moment for you that sticks out from when you were playing here? Um, just the, the interaction with the fans. So uh, you know we're we're obviously in a different building now uh, in PNC Park here. So um, is it PNC Park? Or PNC, PNC Stadium. PNC Stadium. I mean, That's all right. You never played here though, butchered right? Butchered that. One. Never played here. No, I was here for the opener though. With, I was with DC and the QC okay. staff when they opened, but. Um, so um, when we were at Robertson Stadium, there was some something about the intimacy there. I think it was it felt like people were on top of you, and then there was also these moments. So we had a, like an autograph alley was one. Um, I was always kind of a big believer that those interactions. Uh, and I'm going to digress here. This yeah. I can do that on this. Yeah, right? pocket. We're open. Yeah, we're good. We go. So uh, when I was a kid, I grew up. I grew up in Vancouver. I used to watch the Vancouver Whitecaps in the old NASL in the 70s. And one of my we, you know, they had good crowds. They'd get 25, 30,000 fans. But I would hop over a fence, elude a security guard after games, run on the field. My parents would watch from a distance. And whoever I'd go up to first would get an autograph. But for me, that player, whether it was Buzz Parsons, for example, the Whitecaps, who was not the top player in what the team. Name, Buzz Parsons. I've got to remember that amazing. one. Amazing. But then he would be the guy. He's my favorite guy all week. Yeah. And I remember that those kind of moments where you meet, met an athlete and there's that kind of human interaction where you realize, like, wow, this is just a human being that's really good at what they do. And I get to appreciate and watch them. So I think those moments uh, when I had that opportunity at Robertson, I really appreciated those. I felt like we had tailgates and stuff like that. And you get those interactions. Those are the things that I remember more than anything. Did you, like, were those moments big in you wanting to become a soccer player when you wanting to pursue that professionally? Um, yeah, kind of. Yeah, the, the notoriety was nice. It's <laughs> nice, you know. It's uh, um, this this sport has grown, especially MLS in the last ten years since I played. I mean, I think the financially it's it's grown for these players, and so there's a bit more pressure on them. 
uh, than there was back back in the day. But I, I, you did it more for the enjoyment. I, for me, it was all about competition. That's what yeah. I enjoyed. Uh, Brian Ching and I were talking yesterday, and we were discussing how with Dominic Kinnear, who'd always have Tuesday, would be a, a seven-a-side game. We'd have an old team, kind of a medium team, which would be like Stuart Holden and Jeff Cameron's, and then we had a rookie team. So we'd just play a round robin. Well, the old guys usually would win, but we'd kick the living crap out of the young kids and the other guys. And, <laughs> but my wife would always tell me, Becky would always tell me when I come home, she, she knew on Tuesday, she goes, if I lost, if I had lost, she'd be like, okay, I'm just gonna leave Pat alone for the rest of the day. So it was, <laughs> it's, uh, but the competition is, is uh, something I think is, every player will tell you this too, but that's the biggest thing you miss. And I think as coaching, you get close to it, you know, management, you're probably a little farther away, but at the end of the day, this everything we're doing is here to compete and try to try to be the best that we can be and, and be successful. How do you how do you recreate that competition as a GM? Like, how, do you do that? Is that a mind thing I, for I you? Think, I mean, within my realm, I think you do do that. And within, you start looking around at other clubs and what they're doing and, you know, what they're best in. Uh, there are clubs in our, our league that have certain areas, uh, you know, whether it's analytics, whether it's high performance, whether it's scouting that they are kind of the best in show, so to speak. So I think for us, there's some areas that we've discussed um, that we'd like to really improve here. Uh, one of them, I think, is our scouting department. We'd like to really build that out and make it robust. I think the scouting department here has done as good a job as possible with the limited resources that they've had. But I think that's probably first and foremost what we'll focus on. And hopefully that will uh, be able to translate onto the field. Uh, you mentioned Vancouver and, and growing up in Canada. Obviously, you played 60 caps for the Canadian national team. Yeah, 57. Somewhere 57, around there. Uh, 60 so. would have been nice. <laughs> um, and that the national team for Canada is really starting to it's starting to peak. How, how's it been for you watching them, watching all the young talent that's come out of there? The women's team just winning a gold uh, gold medal. Yeah, it's it's amazing for me because I think. We went through such a long period of time where oh, I, I like to say I debuted in 88. They made the World Cup in 86. I debuted in 88, played all the way through to 2010, I think it was, and never came close to World Cup. And now as soon as I retired, now they're like almost there. So I don't know if there's a balance. You're or the, the catalyst. That's Could what, have been. That's that's what... a catalyst. That's what it was. So, um, But it is nice to see them grow. The, the irony is that I haven't been able to celebrate it as much because I've been now in the United States since the late 90s. And I've really probably come a lot closer to the American team and the American player that's grown up and watched that program, uh, you know, obviously have some so a knockback before. But now the success they have in this young group that the U.S. has is really exciting. But Canada now being able to see them in that group, and now you see you know, the Tejan Buchanan's, you know, Alfonso Davies, you see these young guys coming through. Uh, it's exciting, and I think that's the whole region. You know, Mexico obviously is still a powerhouse, but when you can have Canada, Mexico, and the United States all fighting and, and now pretty level playing field, it's pretty exciting for our region. Um, so when you were mentioning those seven on sevens, and then you guys would do PK drills, was there anyone? that you didn't want to face in practice? Oh, we never did PK drills. No, no never? Right. You never, never had to face never, anybody? Never, no. And I was, I was actually, uh, um, I was pretty lousy at PKs, I always thought, like during the regular season. And then the irony is like when we, did, we you know, we get into the playoffs for some reason, all of a sudden I was half decent at them. So <laughs> I don't know what it was, but uh, no, we did, we didn't, we, we practiced some. Don would always do it as we go down towards the, the stretch in, in terms of the playoffs and, and down in the playoffs. But, so uh, just instinct for you guys and you just, who, how, so for you, you obviously had one, the big one. You're of the trying biggest, to go somewhere here. I'm trying to no, figure out where you're going. No, right? just one of the biggest saves yeah. ever to win the first championship for the club. Well, I'll describe it because I, I and this is, you know, I apologize to Jay Heaps now because it, it was, it was a moment where we had had, the fortunate thing we'd had is we'd seen New England in the semifinal or maybe the quarterfinal had, had penalty kicks. So we had film on them. And yeah. there wasn't a ton of film in the league before, at that stage anyway. So I had a pretty good idea where guys wanted to go. And I think for the most part, I'd guess pretty close, but uh, I don't know if it was Pat Noon or someone put one over, but um, I had a pretty good idea where they're gonna go. But Jay Heaps hadn't taken one before. So I was like, oh, I don't know where Jay's gonna go. But the only thing is I remember is standing there watching and he had a you know 50 yard walk. And it was the most uncomfortable looking human being that I'd ever seen. And you could tell this was the last place in the world he wanted to be. So in my mind, I just said, if you can guess the right way here, then you're going to have a good chance because he's probably not going to hit it that well. And fortunately, I guessed the proper side. And I'm sure Jay would tell you it's probably one of the worst PKs he's ever taken. Um, you know, and he's one of the most, you know, best competitors I ever, ever got the opportunity to play against. But uh, it was pretty enjoyable. Yeah. Honest opinion on the silver ball. 
<laughs> oh, the, the the trophy? No, the ball that you guys played was like silver. Oh, that's right. Weird... Oh, that's right. That, yeah, I don't, I don't, to be honest, it was round and I kept it out. So that's all we're kind of worried about. <laughs> Same ball as yeah, all the exactly. others, right? Same exactly, size, everything exactly. like that. Um, the club, it's a lot different than when you left. There's a new stadium, new owners, obviously women's club, Houston Sports Park, new logo. Yeah, new, right? exactly. Everything like that. Right uh, what excites you the most about being back? I think that, that it is a new, it is a new club. It's a, it's a very different club than when I left. And I think there's been a lot of improvements uh, and a lot of moving forward. But I think we still have more, more growth, more room for growth. And I think if we can do that as a, as a group, as a unit, as everyone working together, uh, I think we'll be very successful. And then the season's almost ending where, you know, one more game as we're recording this, one more game. But so how do you kind of – take being here for just that time evaluation is a lot of tape you've obviously been around you you've seen a lot of the players coaches everything like that how do you take that into evaluation as you head into the offseason yeah it's so obviously when you you get the opportunity you hear the jobs open and you're applying for it and you're interested you start watching take a little more interest it's a little different being in the east and the west so uh you know for me it was kind of playing catch up can i get a get an idea exactly who this group is who are these players who are these coaches who's the staff um, and I think it's easier to evaluate the players because you can watch film, you get a good idea. I think you have a pretty good feel of what's going on. It's, it was great seeing the Colorado game live. Um, excited to see the Montreal game live, to see guys how they are, what their body language is like, what they're fighting for here at the end, which obviously there's not much to play for. But in the end, it's going to be a massive game in Montreal for Montreal. This is their season. They need three points. So it's going to be a good challenge for our group and see what we can do. Uh, I think from a staff standpoint, you know, I've, Got in the ground now for about 24 hours. I think the biggest thing now is just to evaluate them and see, see, what, they, see what their plans are. I think some of them, uh, it's been difficult times this year for them. Um, so I'm just going to try to evaluate and meet with everyone individually and, and see where we go. So um, if you were, you know, supporters are happy to have you back. Everything we've seen on social media, everyone's very excited to nice. have you back. That's great. That's good news. If, good news. if you were talking to them, what would, you know, what would you say your goals are? Uh, our goal is to have a competitor here that can compete for championships. That, that's our end goal. Like I, I want to, uh, I remember the, the, the 06 and the 07, and I don't want to harp on that because it's a different club. It's a different era. The league has completely changed. I mean, I think we're 12 teams back then, 14 teams. Yeah. A lot a different animal now when you have 28 teams next year. So, you, you know, it's going, to be, it's going to be that much more difficult. But at the same time, that enjoyment, the ability when we can win a championship for all the fans. And, and I think I'll go back to that save against Jay Heaps. My, my fondest memory of, of playing soccer in general, period, is when I, I caught the ball, I got up, and I actually, I mean, a goalkeeper never slides on his knees, but, knees, but this was the one time in 25 years I did. And I remember grabbing the ball and kind of running towards a sea of orange in the crowd and, like, sliding on my knees. And those are the moments that you want to share like with your fans you want them and i think that's what connects the fans to the players to the club and i think that's what i you know that's that's ultimately what our goal is here at the club well pat thank you so much for sitting down with us joining us as as you start this next adventure for you with the club uh we speak for a lot of the fans and plenty of the staff we're really excited the whole staff that's fantastic I, I that's can, great I can speak for everybody. every they, single they, player person is yeah, staff that's fantastic they email me they tell yeah. me all the time. And they hit me they hit up me on, on Twitter, Twitter at Karen Heinrich. Yeah. You guys, you guys know, know what to do. Yeah, no, th thanks for having me on. And I'm, I'm really excited about this, uh, this kind of new era for the group. Thank you.